Greetings, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful time, and I hope you're having, I hope your your week's going terrifically. Well, I've actually gotten a, a comment asking why I haven't posted a deck list for Miri, and I, well, I already replied to it, but one of the things I wanted to point out was that I don't build a deck telling you what you must play or what you have to play. I, I, I never want to build a deck and, and say, well, you gotta play this or you're gonna lose. Or rather say, oh, you lost because you didn't play my cards. No, it's, that's not how anyone should... That's not how the game is meant to be played. Uh, it's 60 cards. You shuffle them, or in this case of a tiny leader deck, it's 49 cards. You shuffle it, you may not get your combo, you may not get the best possible thing, but you're going to have fun. That's that's the point of it being a game. Uh, obviously, if you want to win the tournament, try try your best. Try to make as best decisions as you can. I don't I don't make the best decisions every time. And I know someone will say, oh, well, of course you don't make good decisions. You're playing that card. And that's the kind of thing we want to avoid in this community. This this Magic the Gathering isn't about that. It's not about telling people they're wrong. It's not about telling people that they're bad. It's about enjoying the game and what it can do. It's, well, shoot. So let me just show you some of the stuff that this deck can do in Miri. Without actually giving you a deck list, I just want to show you what method I, I used when I decided I wanted to build a deck. Now, one of my favorite things to do way back in the 90s, there was this deck type called Senior Stompy. And you just put out mana. You just generated so much mana. It usually was like, you play the forest, you tap, you play your... Well, shoot, there's so many different things. And in a singleton format like Tiny Leaders, you might get a Land War Elf, or you might get a Fendhorn Elf, or an Arbor Elf, or heck, you might even get the uh, the Snowland Elf. Uh, what is it? The Fendhorn Druid? No, 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 not Fendhorn Druid. But the point is... Our first turns are kind of spoken for. We can play this land or elf. We're pretty good. We've already got two mana for our next turn. And that's where things get interesting because one of my favorite things to do way back in the day was tap the forest, play a Quirion Ranger. Now, this is the second turn. We have not played a land yet. We might not even have a land. But what we'll do is we will tap the land or elf for one mana, return the forest to our hand to untap the land or elf, tap for a second green mana, play the forest. We have three green mana on turn two with only these three cards. That's fantastic. That, there's, there's just so many things. Not to mention, we've played a green spell so we can put out Talara's Battalion. And we've got, and we still got one mana floating. We could play, oh, so many different things. But speaking of but Talara's Battalion, I mean, this was a good combo in and of itself, but our first turn getting out of Talara's Battalion is so difficult to do because it costs two mana and you have to play another green spell. So the only way I could figure out to do that, or well, I mean, this is the way I figured it out. Anybody could figure it out. Was you need to have a forest, and then you just need to, some way to produce an extra green mana. So Lotus Petal would do it, or perhaps Elvish Spirit Guide, you can exile it to get yourself an extra green mana. But the point of it was you would play Wild Growth or Utopia Sprawl on this forest. That's your green spell for the turn. The Utopia Sprawl would also work for green spell for the turn. But playing that one green spell, now your land taps for two mana. And then, because you play a green spell, you can put out Talara's Battalion on turn one. And that's just one simple combo that the deck can do. Uh, and that's not even the best of the combos. There's other things that the deck can do for first turn. That It's it's the kind of thing that mystifies the opponent. It's, they look at it and say, wow, I've never seen somebody do that before. Like, for example, let's say you don't get an elf. You don't get a mana elf, but you get something else. Let's say we play the Querying Ranger. And then we play Paradise Mantle. Well, on the next turn, check this out. No lands. Darn. But we'll put the Paradise Mantle on the Query Ranger. We'll tap it for one mana. Return the forest to our hands to untap the Query Ranger. Tap it for another mana. That's two. Play the forest. Tap it. That's three mana without even using an extra elf. A Paradise Mantle, of all things. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that great? Look at all the mana you can produce in green. And I, that's three mana. That means we get Miri out on turn two. It means, it means so many great things. And that's the kind of decks I like to build. That's the kind of strategies I love. I, it's, <laughs> it's just, there's so many cool things you can do. And that's not even the original Senior Stompy. When I played Senior Stompy, we were playing Rogue Elephants, tapping the forest and sacrificing it. On turn two, though, with that combo, I would play a Rogue Elephant and sacrifice my forest. Then I'd play a Harvest Worm and pull the forest back up to my hand. I would have four creatures out on turn two and have tapped for about five mana. 
well, I'd, you know what I mean. I'd have tapped for three mana, but I'd have played the Quirion Ranger as well. And oh gosh, people would call judges over and say, hey, how did he do this? And I'd have to literally start my turn over from the beginning and show the judge how it worked. And that's still fine. I have no problem with doing that. But <laughs> he gets so much mana going. On turn two, you can do these kind of things. On turn three, you can awaken or do it. And swing out with the forest. Doesn't have summoning sickness. You could wild beastmaster and give it plus three plus three and swing or plus four plus four and swing out and give all your creatures it. Beastmaster's ascension. You need as many creatures as possible. So we play Colony Garden. It's there's just so many good cards in the deck. Song of the Dryads. Look, Miri's unblockable. Might of the masses with all those creatures. Put it on the Beastmaster. That's Wild of the Beastmaster masses. That's awesome. There's just so many good cards that you can play, but you'll you'll probably notice these cards aren't exactly expensive either. This is like a 50 cent rare. Uh, Awaken or Druid's like 10 cents, if even that. Miri might be going for 4 or $5, but I, you don't even have to play Miri. You could play so many other creatures. And... Well, so long as you know what you're doing and you're playing it for fun, if you're having fun playing, it's probably because you've made good choices. So, really, just try to enjoy Magic as much as you can. Now, real quick, let's play another game of this deck and, and just see what we can do with it. Alright, let's go for as much damage as we can deal. I am, of course, shuffling. I, this is a different way of shuffling. I do this because this keeps the cards straight. Um, this means that later on, if I need to sell a card or if I need to put it in a different deck, the cards aren't going to be warped. And obviously having some warped cards in a deck that's mostly not warped cards, that is a form of marking the deck. That's why I don't like to bend them. But I got this fairly well shuffled. Go ahead and cut. Draw our seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven cards. Four, three. Let's see what we got. Mind Crank, Forest, Nest Invader, Might of the Masses, Wild Growth, Snake Umber, and Mox Diamond. Well, we won't be playing the Mox Diamond anytime soon, but we can definitely put the Wild Growth on our Forest. So we've got at least two mana here. So let's go for that. Forest, tap, Wild Growth. No damage dealt on turn one. Oh no! On to turn two. <laughs> Draw. It's a Forest. Let's see. I think we're better off not losing it, but it's nice to know that if land destruction is is something you're going up against, I could get this out and not lose. But let's put out... Let's go ahead and put out Miri. Tap. Miri's in play. On to turn three. Untap. Draw. Let's see, we'll play an Ornithopter. Let's play... Nest Invader. Did it. Let's go to our tokens. Let's see... Let's see, I think that's Larry. I have three tokens for the Eldrazi. Uh, Larry, Curly, and Shemp. Then, let's see, we've still got one mana left over. We could might have the masses for four on Miri, but why do that? And let's not even play our mill strategy right now. So let's just swing for two with Miri. Two damage dealt at the end of turn three. On to turn four. Untap. Draw. It's another land. I think... We're doing well enough. Ah, heck. Let's go ahead and discard and put Mox Diamond into play. All right. Let's pay one, two, three. Put Snake Umbra on Miri. Gets plus one, plus one, and whenever it deals damage, creature damage to an opponent, we can draw a card. And Totem Arma. Always good. Let's swing out for one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Do we just swing for five? Let's just swing for five and see if we get something cool off the draw. So that's a total of seven damage dealt at the end of turn four, and we get to draw a card. Draw Wild Beastmaster. Well, if only we'd gotten that out sooner. All right, let's go to turn five. Untap. Draw. I think... Hmm. We're not going to be able to cast this just yet, but we might get another land. Of course, we could just sacrifice that for the extra mana. Because I have both of these. That's not a bad idea. But let's go for let's go for what makes the most sense. We'll swing for five. Or one, two, three, four, five. It goes to twelve damage at the end of turn five. Now we've played, we've only done twelve damage, but this is a much safer scenario for damage dealing. Draw a card, probably land. 
But it wasn't, it was Paradise Mantle. That's not too bad, though. Hmm, we won't get a mana out of it this turn. But, one, two, three. Three mana, we'll play Wild Beastmaster. We'll sacrifice the Eldrazi spawn for one colorless, tap for green, play to Lars Battalion. And, uh... We could have paid one to equip this to one of our other creatures and then tap that creature for mana like the Ornithopter or even the Eldrazi spawn before sacrificing it. But we didn't. And that's fine. Let's go to turn... Oh. Let's go to turn six. Untap. Take our draw. Altar of the Brood and Mind Crank. Well, we didn't get our a mill combo. We did get these to come up, but we don't need them. Instead, what we're going to do is pay one green. Mind of the Masses, the Wild Beastmaster. Let's see, we've got five creatures in play, so it has plus five, plus five. Then let's go to combat. Let's see, that's six, and then eight, that's 14, and then nine, that's 23, and then, uh, sorry, then 10, that's 33, and then another five. That's 38 damage. So at the end of turn six, we'll have dealt 38 damage. Uh, well, shoot, let's go ahead and make it an even 50. 50 damage by the end of turn six. Now, did we just get an amazing group of combos all of a sudden, all at once? Well, that's kind of what green does. Uh, Talar's Battalion, Miri, these are all cards that are difficult to deal with. Oh, we've got to draw a card, forgot to say. Let's say, draw? It's a forest, play it. <laughs> So we get a lot of interesting combos out of this, and that's kind of what I wanted to point out. So I hope you saw what this deck could do. It's a, it's a much safer deck than the mono red. Uh, it gets so much mana, you get so much mana production, you get all your cards out much, much more efficiently. It's got built-in card draw, built-in trample, built-in creature pumps, the kind of stuff that red doesn't get to do. That's why we can swing out for 38 damage in one turn. And I agree that, you know, maybe it is a little bit uh, easy for a deck to do something like that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not easy, it's it's a little too... I mean, you could say I got some good combos in this, and I, I can't really fault you in saying that. The cards came up the way they came up. You saw me shuffle. So yeah, this is just one way to play the deck. All the killer cards in it didn't really make that much of a difference. The Mox, the Mox Diamond wasn't necessary, the... Uh, Talar's Battalion, not even necessary. There's a lot of really good cards that are two mana for a good amount of power. Might of the Masses is a common, while Beastmaster, I doubt it's going for that much. But yeah, the deck does very well. And I hope seeing how the deck plays has taught you that you can build a decent deck without having to break the bank, without having to rely on powerful cards. Um, after all, I didn't need the powerful cards to win. I didn't need the powerful cards to deal 38 damage. So yeah, please, take whatever I say for, for deck building and, well, I don't really tell you how to build a deck, but take whatever you see in these videos as just an example of how to play and how to enjoy playing Magic the Gathering. Alright, I think that's enough for today, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment if I made any mistakes. Uh, I trust you to do that, and I uh, hope you have a great week. Take care, everybody.